Hi friends, welcome to this webinar on PC Dummies Offline. Let me introduce myself. My name is Prasanna. I work for Hightech Metrology in Australia. I am the application specialist for PC Dummies in this region. So in today's webinar, I'm going to take you through the sequence of steps that help you do the program offline. And not only that, some tips and tricks from 2020 R1 as well. It's not going to be a full 2020 R1 session, and my focus today is going to be offline. So how to do a program offline, then how to move the machine offline, then how to do the alignment offline sort of stuff. And this webinar is targeted basically for the intermediate and the basic users of PC DMS who never used PC DMS offline before. Saying that, this is going to be helpful for anyone who wants to learn offline programming. So, for today's webinar, I use 2020 R1, the latest release from Hexagon. And using this opportunity, just want to thank Hexagon for their initiative in offering the customers the free offline version to support the customers, especially in this COVID-19 crazy scenario. So, the offline is all about to be productive and then be productive. So what happens when you do a program online, you connect your PC DMS license to the machine and then you walk by the machine and then you do a program. So basically you study the OEE of your machine and then you see that the machine is not uh, up to the mark. So what happens is when you occupy a machine, for doing the programming, so machine uh, machine should be running ideally, right? So that's the reason the machine is there, it should run 24 by 7, 3 shift. And then in case if you use a machine for programming, there is no point. So that's the reason offline programming is there. The help of offline programming, so you could do the program sitting in your home or while traveling, and then by the time you reach your workplace, you are all ready to go. So the only difference between the offline and the online is I do see both are almost same in PCDMS. There is not going to be a big difference which you will be seeing when I'm walking you through this seminar. But in case of online, you would be using the job box. Then basically you are in front of the machine and then you remove the machine with the help of the job box. But here in offline, I'm going to show how to move the machine. Basically it's going to be through the mouse and the keyboard. Right, so let's jump into the session. Uh, what you are seeing right now is the home page of 2020 R1 release and it is very colorful and then you see a lot of new tabs on the left. Uh, saying this, all this started happening in the version 2019 R1 PC So if any of you are using any version before 2019 R1 and there is going to be a bouncer for you. Uh, the PC Linux team started revamping the home page. They wanted it to be more attractive and more user-friendly, and then more of an online library for the users where they can just go and read some example videos. Uh, if they have a question, uh, for example, in this case, if I want to know how to do the rehosting for my LMS license, so I can view this video. And then if you want to know about this Excel form report, which is all new stuff from 2019 R1, so basically a nice video out here that this would guide you how to use Excel form report in PCDM. It basically exports the data from PCDM to Excel, and, uh, and then you can customize Excel as well to suit your need. And then, for example, if you come here, you see PCDM is protect. PCDM is protect helps in protecting your measurement routine. And then it is especially for aerospace, medical, and the industries that follow high level of strict auditing procedures and where the traceability is important. And how this works, you can just go through this image protect video to understand more about this. So there are a lot of new stuff like this. And what happened in 2020 R1, uh, this team started putting the example routines out here. For example, if you are doing the part program and you end up with a scenario on how to do a profile analysis for a small art, so you could download this example routine and then you can see the code. So this goes to basically the folder, it's C drive, and there is a part of the folder. You can see, so there is a part of the folder, and then you can just open the routine, and this contains a profile as well. Apart from the profile, 
could see an PDF which tells you about what's, what's, what's basically done in this program and why you have to follow this step, kind of the, the detail, the scenario to apply this example, PRG, PRP, CAT5, if it is having a CAT. So all these things are, all these things are new in PC Dimitri 2020. Okay, so let's go inside PC Dimitri. Okay, so to, to see the home page, like however I'm seeing here, you should be having an active, active internet connection, which I forget to mention. And if you do not want to see any of these, obviously you do have an option in F5 setup inside PC Dimitri. And of course, we can just switch back to the legacy way of how you do the things. Uh, that means you won't see the home page in the new way, how I am seeing now, and then you'll be seeing the home page like how it is in the version 2018 or in 2017. Yep. Let's go to the new program. Uh, okay, I'm just going to click this icon. Then I'm good to go with the new program. I can say PC Dimis Webinar 2020 R1 offline. Okay, so what I did now is I opened a new program, then I have just loaded my prop file, which is basically HPS 6.3c, etc. Probe head. If you want to see the probe head, just hover the mouse, put S9, and you see the configuration of my probe head. I use a 5 degree list, and then HPS X1ST probe module, and then HPS is X1S 0SH silos holder, and then 3 by 40 mmt Good enough. So what I'm going to do here is I'll be importing the model, and then I would bring the machine and then I would just do the program from there. So what you see here is a quick measure toolbar. This quick measure toolbar is the collection of toolbars. For example, if you click here and you see all the dimension commands inside the dimension icon, then you see all the constructed feature commands inside the constructed feature icon. So this is basically a collection of toolbars, and this is introduced somewhere near 2015. And then what happened is uh, you don't need to you don't need to have a lot of toolbars occupying your graphic display window, taking up or eating up your screen space. And then and so so you know don't I don't like to dump my graphic display window with a lot of toolbars and then I like to do the programming with, uh, with this new quick measure toolbar of course which is there in PCDM is for quite some time. Okay, so what happens now I'm going to just get this icon and bring my CAD model. So I'll be using the large block for the moment. Please, my CAD model is in. I put it in isometric view. And you see this quick measure toolbar is arranged in such a way, I mean, this is how it comes when you open PC is that it follows your program sequence. For example, you import the model, put it in isometric view, load the probe file, scale to fit, operator command, clearance queue, or DCC. So that's how it works. So right now I imported the model, I did a scale to fit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring in the machine as well. So to bring in the machine, just go to insert hardware definition, then click on machine, and then go to bridge, then I'm going to bring in hexagons global S. So I like this machine to all 2210. It's not so big, it's good enough, or maybe 12, 15, 10. Yeah, seems to be good enough. And then I show the machine volume, what this does. Puts this green color cube in the graphic display window, and this is the working volume of your machine. Apply, and then I say, okay. 
So automatically now my CAD model is sitting in the machine table. So this, this happens automatically. Okay. So now I don't want to do the program uh, just by taking the hits in the CAD model now, because of course I just want to bring in the fixture as well. Uh, I'm going to use this opportunity to show you how to do a small quick fixture. Insert hardware definition quick fixture. So what I have here are the hexagons modular fixture kit components. The best thing is to build a fixture in SolidBox or Katia and then bring inside PC Linux. That way you would save a lot of time instead of doing this from the scratch. So I'll be using one of these modular kits here to build my own fixture component. Uh, of course, I do have these in my lab as well, so that whatever I do here for the simulation would help me to run this program online. So I'm going to load the base plate. Good enough. This is the one what I have. Stands. I use a 16 stand. Loading it as well. So once you say apply, you see the components of the graphic display window. So to work with quick fixture or to build a fixture in the graphic display window, you should log into the quick fixture menu. Quick fixture menu is inside of the graphic mode in the quick measure toolbar. This is a quick measure toolbar, as you know. The graphic mode is here. Then just click the drop down here and then you will see the quick fixture mode. Just click this one. So click this one, and you'll see the whole functions related to the quick fixture. So we, are, we will not be going through uh, all these individual functions in detail today, but we'll be using a few of these to get us started with offline programming. So to build a fixture, I need to work in multiple views. So to work in multiple views, there is another nice tool available in PCDMS. So, which is also new, which is introduced, I believe, from 2019 R1. Then, if you go here, the graphic items toolbar, you'll be seeing here rotation widget, second rotation widget. You'll see a nice widget appears here. So, this helps us in navigating to different views without having to go to the view component each time and then rotate. We can model for in the different views. So I just want to see the CAD window in the top view. Just get in the top view here. You will see it's get related to C. Okay. So now my fixture is at the corner of the machine volume. I just want to put this at the center. So since I am in the quick fixture menu, so I can use the left mouse click and then just hold the fixture component and then I can drag it across the machine volume. So I just want this to go in the approximate center, sounds good. And then I just want to drag the stance as well. One, two, three. Using the right mouse click, I can adjust the view and move this entire cat along with the machine and you get the graphic display window. Okay, and using the wheel in the mouse, so I can just rotate it however I want. Okay, using the mouse, I zoom in. Zoom out, zoom in, zoom out. Okay, so what I want now, just want the stands to go into this plate. So we have a nice technique here. Uh, the technique is using the quick feature gesture. Before I do this, I just want, I don't want this cat blocking my view. I just want to drag this cat and put somewhere. Okay. okay. So now you see uh, my fixture plate is hanging in the space. So I just want to drop this onto the CMR table before I position the stands. That just click the rotation widget. Zoom in. 
make the selection with the drop. So you have to click this function, this is a drop function, then prefix here, select here, excuse me, then try to set the fixer plate in motion, then just click. So this puts fixer plate to the machine table automatically. So that's a awesome property. Next thing, go to the ISO view, then let's locate the stands in one of the circles. So to do that, and select the drop, make a selection for the stand using the left mouse click, then using the shift keyboard function, zoom into the plate, then choose a circle where you want the sand to go. Click the sand the same now. Click the sand. I want this to go in the same row. Excuse me. Fine. Same thing for third stand. Seems to be straight, so this makes uh, a stand a triangle shape. So that's good for my block to sit. Good. So what happens now? Now I have a setup to load my CAD model, and the base plate sitting on the machine table is good. The stands are located. In the holes is good. Now let me drag my cat and just position it approximately top of the sand. So in the front view, it looks in position with respect to x-axis. Let me just have a look in the side view. And there you see it's not exactly in the center. Okay, let me adjust this in this view as well. Okay, now this looks good. So what I'm going to do now. As you expect, I'm just going to click this function here, the drop. Make the selection with the drop, then just click the CAD model. There you go. It's beautiful. So now I have the setup ready to start the programming. And you can see the fixture is fitting exactly in the center of the machine volume. CAD model is located on top of the fixture, and this is how I have the setup done in my lab here in Hyde. We just want to exit the quick fixture menu now. I don't have much things to do with the quick fixture. So let me exit the menu. So just unselect this one by just doing the left click. And then you see the components of the fixture is gone. So just go back and put it in the graphic translate mode. Isometric view. And then ready for the program. So what I'll be doing now is start with control and F4 option. The control and F4 is a shortcut key for the program mode. If I do control and F4 in the keyboard, control and then F4 in my keyboard, I am in the program. Or you can do this through the toolbar options for that. Just click here, then you have to come to the program mode here, just make a selection. Make a selection, and take the hits in your CAD model. So now, now I have three hits for my plane. I'm going to end this with the keyboard and button. There. Line. Now I have features to constrain my six series of freedom. So what I'm going to do is click this super fast quick align button. 
see this lightning symbol. Some of you were not aware of this quick line function. Basically, it just sees the order, then it constrains the degrees of freedom, and then it does automatic alignment. For example, it can constrain three degrees of freedom for a plane, two for the line, and one for a point. So just when I click this, you see manual and DCC alignment for just 10 in a few seconds. And if you expand the code, for example, if you want to go to command mode and then have a look at that, because you can do that, see a lot of things happen here. DCC alignment, manual alignment, so everything it did automatically. So let's go back to the summary mode. The quick align function not only works for a plain line point, it works for all combination which can constrain the six degrees of freedom. For example, you can use this for plane circle circle, you can use it for plane line line, and you can use this for plane cylinder cylinder, and then you can use this for three planes, and then you can use this for two perpendicular cylinders, which logically constrain the six degrees of freedom following the ASME standard. Okay, so right now I just want to stick to plane line point. My alignment is done. The next step okay, so I'm just going to do a multi select. I'm going to do a multi select quick selection, which is introduced in 2019 R1 of PC Remus. We just make selection on top of the plane. And then if you see the holes of same size, for example, the bolt hole pattern here, the circles are of the same size. So instead of doing the selection finger, I mean, instead of doing the selection by using the auto feature menu, or by using the fit feature menu, so you can do the selection for all the circles by just clicking on top of the plane. So just pressing the shift in the keyboard, I already made the selection for my plane here. Now once I made the selection for my plane, it automatically sees the circles are of the same diameter on this plane. It makes a selection for all the circles with a single click. Press shift, once I click, it makes each circle in a single shot. So if you want, you can accept this, or if you don't want, you can reject this. Uh, if you want to change the properties for the circles, for example, seven, not a good number of it, I just want to make it six, five seems too much for me. I would just say that one is good enough. So then we do apply all. We do apply all. If you see the pick window, And you could see the coordinate of the circle. And then if you go to the client mode, if you want to see the individual hits for the circle, and you can see six hits here. Right. The next step. Okay, we have eight circles here in the summary mode, which are which are created using the multi-select feature. I just want to reiterate on how to do the multi-select feature because it is a very nice function inside this image. So what you have to do is you have to make sure that you are not in program mode. So that is a key thing. If you are in a program mode, then if you are trying to do the selection for the surface, you will see the point gets picked when you hit a surface. So that is a key thing. You should be in a translate mode. Once you are in a translate mode, Select the surface, for example, the plane here, shift keyboard, press, and then hover the mouse around the circle. And you see the circle circuit. If I hit the left mouse key now, you will see the circles are appearing in the summary window, or the command for the circles will be clear. You just don't want to do because already I have eight circles here. Same thing for the cylinder. You want to pick eight cylinder with a single click. Same thing, shift keyboard, then just hover around the cylinder, and then you would see eight cylinder would be created with a single click. 
the function is introduced in 2019 R1, especially for the applications like this base plate, where the user has to go and pick the circle each time by pressing a shift key, or he has to go to the auto feature toolbar, hit it, or he has to just do the loops. A lot of things are there with the help of the multi select, the things are getting much easier now. Right. So, saying that, I'm just going to do uh, another circle in the Y minus U. Uh, what I did here uh, before I measure the circle, I just want, I just want to show you. I have enabled auto -res on in my auto feature. And then, if I pick my circle, then you will see in the autorest puts the best wrist following the vector of the feature to measure the feature and if it's automatic. So I have these angles already calibrated in my list of props. Uh, and then if I, if I do not have an angle which are calibrated, of course, because it in this would try to show up the angle required to measure the feature, then you can go back and then calibrate the angle. So I like to do the program like this by enabling the auto wrist. So I would say, okay, here, and then I would just accept it. Uh, and next thing, just want to measure this outer circle as well. Okay. What happens now, this outer circle is uh, is bigger than the inner circle. I just don't want to go with the same number of hits of inner circle. That's the reason the quick picture toolbar has been introduced. Uh, the purpose of this toolbar, I mean, you don't need to go inside the auto feature to change the properties of the feature each time. So now I'm creating the circle. If I hit the properties here on the fly, I can change the number of things for this circle. So that's the entire purpose of this big widget, which is introduced again in 2019 R1. And I just like this one, and then I would just hit an apply and then get supply. If I want to save this as a default, which I'm not going to do now, because I can, of course, save this as a default. I don't want to do this as a default because I just want to do 12 circles, 12 hits for a bigger circle. And then I just want six hits to remain for another circle as well. So just say I'm going to hit this right here, then it's all good. I have a circle in my graphic display window now. It's also in the edit window, the circle is created. Now I just want to create another circle here. Okay, for this one, uh, properties, I would just say full. Then now, then I'm just going to measure the features on the X plane. Select the surface. Then pick the circles. Auto race, accept. All good, accept. Setting, right plus V. Okay, so here I'm going to take an opportunity. Uh, you see what happens now? Now I have my machine, and then I have my quick picture cat model. If I want to hide the machine temporarily without having to take out of the machine outside of the program, just want to hide it. So there is a way to do it. So if you go to the graphic mode, and then, uh, of course, it's not in the graphic mode. Sorry for that. Then if you just go to the graphic items, then there is an option for machine. Just click that one. The machine is gone now. If you want to bring the machine back, just click here. Same thing. If you just want to hide the probe, you can hide the probe. Bring the probe, just bring the probe. So all these are inside this toolbar, in quick measure toolbar. Okay, just want to hide the machine. I just want to keep my probe. Uh, hide the machine. Just want to keep my probe. Right. The measure on the back side. Let's use Shift keyboard button and then left mouse click. Okay. Shift keyboard button and then left mouse click. So what I'm missing here, I should do control plus shift to put a point. My intention is to pick a point. Just hold control and shift to pick a point. On the surface, control shift with the keyboard, left mouse click. Point. Accept. All good. So I have a decent enough program. Things 
uh, what I want to measure in this block, of course, in all four sites, I use auto race, and I use quick feature, then I use multi seller quick feature, then I use the quick widget option. All these things are new in PCD image to help us work effectively in offline. Right, so next, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to insert the mouse to make that happen. I'm going to graphic display window operation. Just like just come here, clear and small, then auto insert move. The auto insert move is a very nice function. It is built in PC DMS a very long time before. I mean, the function is there, and this function got revamped in the year 2019 R1. They introduced a uh, new algorithm for auto insert move, and there are two algorithms now one is the legacy and the preview. So I'm just going to use the preview function of auto insert moves. I mean, the preview algorithm of uh, the auto insert moves uh, using that. Review uh, auto insert mouse algorithm. And now my move points would be computed so that you will see nice and safety move and safe move. Of course, it will take some time, but it will be more accurate. So I'm just going to do this. Once I do this, and then it brings up this dialog. Uh, just going to select the features from where I want this. I want this from the manual point. Manual point, and then it should end with point two. That is my last feature. So I keep my move length as 50. Uh, then the advanced settings, I have a time time for the algorithm to compute a proper solution. The bounding box offset is uh, basically the imaginary cube sitting around the part which helps the algorithm to compute the more with a better accuracy so if i want a bigger more my machine volume is of course bigger i can just keep it even thousand but for the moment 800 is good enough the solution time i just want to give the software a few seconds to compute this i don't want this to take for a long time because this is not a complex part. And then once I say this, okay, you see here, the software started computing the more points for the feature. Right. And this is done. Auto insert mode is completed. Good. What happens now? And you can see the more points are added. Wherever the more points are required, the software has added it automatically. I just want to bring the machine now. And then I'm going to enable the path lines. What I did is I did Alt P in my keyboard that puts the path lines on. You can see the moment of uh, the machine pro between the features. I have enabled the arrows in the path line so that you can see the direction of the travel of the pro. So I will show you where to switch this on at the end of this session. So I see it's not bad. But we can't, we can't conclude without running the collision direction. How good it is! So I could see the probe is not going to hit the table. It comes too far down. And of course, I can lift this slightly up. But first, let me run the collision. Collision, collision. Then if I run a collision, now it comes to now potential collisions so i'm not going to worry about this manual hit because of course i'm going to add a manual point before i finalize the program there and then operator command so no need to worry about this one so let me take it from here one two three so again uh, i don't care about the manual hit for the line so i'll be moving this and then and then the operator command starts from here the game starts from now so I'll be adding a more point here.
You can see the machine makes a safe travel. You don't see a big problem till now. Of course, I need to add a more point after the DCC, or before the DCC begins, sorry. So, which I'll be doing anyway, once this solution detection is over. Okay, there is change. Change, change, change. This is where I just need to see it closely. Typically, it moves very close. But of course, it won't hit. But in this case, right collision, of course, just need to change this one. Okay, so the collision detection is completed now, but what I see is there is a potential collision between circle 8 and 9. So we need to take care of that one. And then need to add a more point before DCC. That's it. My program is ready to go once it is done. Let me close the collision detection dialog. So I know it's circle 8 and 9. So what I'm going to use is another function in PC image, it's all shift P in the keyboard. This keyboard function helps you to debug the path line between your feature above and the feature below, depending on where your cursor is. So in this case, if you see, I just want to debug the path line from circle 8 to circle 9, did all shift P, and then you'll be seeing the path line, circle 7 to circle 8, and then to circle 9. So, turns, I think it's very close here, so probably that's the reason. Yeah, it seems like that's the reason. It's very close here. And then, there is a sample hit here. So the sample heat is the reason for collision. It's just trying to take in the chamfer. So it is the reason for collision. I'm just going to remove all shift P from my keyboard. And I'm just going to do a F9. Then I'm just going to remove that sample heat. Then I'm just going to say OK. So now what happens? collision would have been gone. Unless we run the collision direction, we don't know, but I hope it is gone. Let's run this again. So before that, I just need to add a more point before the DCC measurement. So let me bring the probe near the DCC for that. Just go back to program mode. Then I want to go back to the program mode. What I have to do is just we have to move this prop and physically move the prop. I will move the jog box using the right mouse 
button. You see here, when you are in the program mode, you put a right mode button, you can just move the machine. Just like how we move in a job box, and you can see the coordinates of the machine changes. Okay, so that means I'm just going to put a safety point here after the manual point is done. So this is where I'm going to start my first DCC mode. That means I come here, then I use the option Control and M in the keyboard, or we can use Insert, Insert, and then go to More, and then we can say More here. So that means the machine starts up here. And if you put a path line, And go to operation, perfect display window, and then you can just uh, run a collision detection. And then before you run a collision detection, I'm just going to make this really fast. So what I do is I just go to the animate, animate option in PC Dimis. Just so if you do F5, and then you could get could go to the setup, and then go to an animation, and then on the animation. Make this very fast so that we are done with this fast. Operation graphic display and collision detection. Right. So the machine starts from the move point after the manual is uh, taken. So as I expected, there is no collision between the circles. Okay, so if I put my cursor here, this is where the program ends. So what I need to do now, I can't change the wrist back to A0, B0 from here. Otherwise, there will be a collision. That's what you have seen a few seconds before. So what I'm going to do now, back to program mode, then move the machine up somewhere here at a point and turn the rest to zero be zero. That's it, the program is done. If you want to add another more point, of course you can just another more point. So now all the moves are safe. So I have the move point to end the program. So I just forget to say something. So when I inserted the move point to start the first DCC move, I had inserted it inside the manual alignment. This is not right. So probably I think my cursor was designing inside the manual alignment that time, or I haven't noticed what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to cut this move point using the Control X. Control X, cut the move point. 
then come here to the DCC mode and then put the move point. Okay, so now my first DCC mode starts here. If I reanimate the path lines, I mean, this one you can do by using the Alt plus V in the keyboard, which I said before. Or if you see in the quick measure toolbar, this icon basically generates a path line. So inside the quick measure toolbar, you see the toolbar for the path lines on the optimized path. Okay, so you can just click this one. If you click this, and then there you go. You will see the path lines in the graphic display window. So the program ends here. The last point is measured here, if you remember, and then the machine moves, turns the rest, so let the program ends here. And then the move point, the DCC move, this is the move from which the DCC movement starts. So it sounds pretty safe now. So what I'm seeing here is if you see in this view, this is the machine volume, which I said, then my rest ends here. I mean, in minus Z, it ends in minus Z, I mean, below the machine volume. So it's not going to hit the table. What you would be seeing when you connect this program online, you would be seeing the machine out of tolerance error or machine out of volume error. Okay, so avoid this and to correct any potential collisions, PC Dimis gives you this option, just keep a close watch. What I'm going to do is just hover your mouse because this is the point where the risk change happens. I'm just going to lift this point slightly. Just zoom, 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 and then to hover your mouse, and then if you click, that brings up the move path line dialog. So without you have to rethink what should be adjusted, you can simply put the graphic display window in the view in which you can see the adjustment. Just go here and then adjust in C. See here what happens in C. I'm just adjusting C. And then you can see dynamically the path line moves up. That's it. So I'm okay with this adjustment, and then I would say apply. So what it does, it just adds or edits the existing move. In this case, it edited the existing move. Okay, it's the move point. So this is the move point which got adjusted. So previously it is in minus. Now with the help of the pick window, you can see it is 33.748. That is the advantage of another thing. I mean, the help of this pick window, you no need to expand the code in the summary mode to see what happens. And then you don't need to do a lot of clicks here. Typically when you used to do with the legacy version of PCMS 2018, the help of the speak window, you can just see. So what is the coordinate? Just gives a quick information on how the thing works. Right. So moving ahead, uh, I may want to adjust uh, another path line Though there is no collision here, what I see is uh, if I see my point one DCC, okay, okay, so there is no problem here. The machine moves in A0, B0. But if I see here, this particular moment where the risk comes up, so after the this moves up here, I just want to increase the height of this. Okay, you see the risk turns. And then once the risk change is completed, then the most here seems to be pretty close. So I just want to increase the height. So what I'm going to do here, using the same technique, click on the end of the arrow and just try to lift the Z. Apply. Okay. In this case, the height is adjusted. Of course, I just want to adjust uh, where it starts moving down. So uh, I'll be just clicking the arrow again here. And then in this case, I would be adjusting in Y. So you see the advantage of having the quick widget here. 
All these things, uh, small, small tools, which was introduced in PC Linux in the recent versions, works really nice and helps you to be fast when you just uh, edit the program. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so I need to go in the positive direction to deflect more. Good. I just deflected it. The safe file sign much safer. Okay, and then I would say apply. Then I want to move this one as well towards X. So I'm just going to be the negative X. So that case a wall of the path. What auto insert mode does? Auto insert mode it puts some more points in such a way the probe won't collide with the path. The intention of the auto insert move is to increase or improve the productivity. So you would see the machine moves very close to the part, but it won't collide. But always the safety comes first. So in the case where you think there would be a small risk because of some unforeseen circumstances, or you would be afraid and your heart would be starting to pump. You see the machine moves so close, which I had seen in the training. So in this case, so you can use this tool and then you can make the real small adjustments. Okay, so I'm not going to do any more adjustment now. I see my moves are pretty decent. So another tool which I'm going to introduce for the simulation, which, which helps the simulation is, for example, you don't see a risk changes here. If you want to differentiate the risk change significantly in this path line, is there a way to change the color or uh, color of the risk change where you can identify the difference between the path and the risk change? Yes, there it is. So what I have to do is just press F5 in your keyboard of the setup options go to animation then if you go here tip rotation go here i would just give something dark where i can identify the tip rotation instantaneously when the path line is wrong okay okay now you could see so this is what the color option does i mean you could instantly differentiate the risk changes okay so this helps you in case of any collision Right. Another thing that comes handy is if you go to edit graphic display window and then go to the lighting and materials option. And then if you go to this option symbols and you can adjust the path lines diameter. I mean, you can make this more thick or you can make it more lean. So typically I would like to, like to keep it somewhere between 0.5. Just decent enough, you can see the Thickness. Just to show the difference, I make it 0.25. I say apply. You see, it becomes more thick now. So 0.5 sounds decent enough for me. It is my standard setting. Keep 0.5. And then the diameter of the arrow is 0.2. I mean, whatever the arrow you are seeing here. So it's a diameter of an arrow. Sounds good enough. And then I would keep this arrow mark on. This arrow mark will help me in showing the direction of the movement of the path line. So just keep this on, not going to do anything with this arrow. Then I would just say, okay, here. So these small things comes in handy when you do the simulation. Right, so the program is ready. So this can be run in online. So just to show you a couple of more options which should help you in the programming. I will just take you through uh, another option here, operation graphic display window. And then if you go to, if you go to this option, uh, optimize path. Okay, so I'm not going Okay, let me do the demo on Optimize Path. So what I did here in this program, I had put the move point and then the program is ended. 
to understand more about the optimized path, I should be adding a couple of features in this program. Then you would see what it does. Let me put this in the isometric view. And then I'm going to choose this cylinder. So I'm just going to use the quick feature gesture, shift in the keyboard, left mouse click, hovering the mouse on the surface of the cylinder. So the cylinder is free. You see here, the cylinder is shown transparent. So there is a new function introduced in PC Limits 2020 R1. You will be seeing the features as transparent, even though you have a CAD model, without having to switch on the high quality transparency, so you would see these features very nice. Okay, but the only problem is I see the cylinder is too deep. This is more than 100 mm. Not going to use the length of the cylinder as it is, but for the moment, let me accept the feature. And if you notice, I do not have auto risk here, it means I am going to allow optimized path to do the job. Right, so for the moment, I'm just going to reduce the height of the cylinder. Let me keep this 30 for the moment, and 30 is good enough. And then just going to end the program with a vector point at the top of the demo block. There you go. Right, the so next step, operation, graphic display, optimize path. So I want to optimize the path movement from point two till point three. If you notice a program, the point two is here. The machine moves, machine makes a couple of moves and turns a wrist to A0, B0, and then it ends up somewhere in the machine volume. So when I say to optimize the machine path from point two to point three, PCD may as well try to compute the best available path by removing the existing moves and then adds the wrist wherever it is required to measure the feature following the vector of the feature because you have a CAD model. Right, so going to take this advanced settings and allow the tip changes to be added for the features and then the features would be sorted. Okay, the next step would optimize the path and then add the tip changes. You see now the path is optimized by 83%. PCD mist tells me it found a path this, which is 83% shorter than what I did. Once I click this one, the risks are automatically added to the program. And then if you see here, A30, B90 is already there in the command mode or the summary mode of PCD mist. Okay, it automatically put the risk required to measure the cylinder. The next step would sort the feature and then it would bring up the auto insert moves. See here now it uses A30 B minus 90 to measure the cylinder and then it uses A0 B0 to measure 0.3. All these things are happening automatically. Okay, so then I'm going to use the selected features 0.2 to cylinder 1, which is a current order, feature order as per the optimized mode. And then I'm just going to say, okay, once I tell, okay, the auto insert move is completed. So if you see the program here, basically I have added the cylinder after the point two by doing some two or three moves. And then I finished the program with point three, but optimize path completely changed the order of measurement. The idea is, it would reduce the path to save the time. Then it also adds a risk automatic to measure the feature. That's what the optimized path does. Okay. If I run the path for this feature, features which I measured after the point two, let's see what happens. Alt Shift P. Okay. So point two. Then, as I expected. It changes the risk without hitting the table. That's good. But like I said before, on the right hand side, for another feature, this is out of the machine volume. You will see the machine volume error 
if you go ahead with this move on. So what I'm going to do now, using the technique which I showed before in the webinar, by clicking the end of the arrow. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom it, zoom it to more okay, to bring the move part line dialog and just start moving this here. Go up, go up, go up, go up, all the way up above the machine volume. So if you want this to more, 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 yes. Then I say apply. If I apply, you can say cancel here. Now there won't be any collision. The next thing measures a point, then it takes this path. And then I see this is pretty close. Okay, so I don't run a collision detection now to save the time, but I just want to adjust this part slightly. So that means I need to touch this point here. Come here, touch the point, zoom in, zoom in. There you go. Then just try to adjust the X. A Y. So the Y works here, so we'll just, just go ahead, adjusting the Y. You can see in 3D space what happens. That's good. So not too much, otherwise there is no point in doing the optimized path. The slide adjustment is okay. And then come here, cancel. That's good. So my program is ready to go now. So you can either choose to use optimized path for your entire program, or you can either choose to use for some features. You can decide the best way. So we have all the tools inside the software. So once this is done, I'm just going to remove the path line, put it in isometric view, scale to fit. You want to add an operator command, of course you can come here and add an operator command. I just don't want to complex the time of this program with a lot of high level functions just going to end here by doing some dimension it makes you the cylinder before that and then you can see this nice new feature it's showing transparent and you can see what is happening it's beautiful I ended the program previously with the cylinder here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to set some datums following the 2D PDF, and then I'm just going to call a few dimensions, and then we end the session. So this is the drawing for this demo block. I'm just going to work out this dimension in PCDMS. If you see, if you see this dimension is a composite position for a bolt hole pattern here, the datum is ADB. B is basically the plane out here, and A is the plane on the top, which we can see from this particular drawing, particular view, and then the D is a datum, it's the center ball of this demo block. Okay, so right now, I do have A, my DCC plane feature, I do have a line, my datum B, but I do not have a D. So I'm just going to, uh, measure datum D here. I'll be measuring that as a cylinder, of course. But I don't want to do a path optimize now. Here, my objective is to show the dimensioning during the offline programming. It's not going to be much different than what you do online. So, I'll be going to the position tolerance here. And then I'll be choosing the holes the bolt hole pattern basically, and then I'll be setting up the datums. And then the datum definition dialog is out. So that's what the new exact measure JDNT can do. Basically it brings up the datum definition dialog. Just click on the plus symbol here. Be setting up my plain DCCS datum A. Then it asks me to do a datum B. The datum B is basically my line here, which is a plane, which is basically the plane here. I'll be choosing the line, that's fine. 
So and then if I go here and then I'll be changing the name to T. Now I'll be choosing the cylinder between measure and end. Okay, so the contestation is on, date and A, date and B, then date and D. So I'll be changing the order here to follow the drawing, material condition, and follow by date and B. It's very simple. So we come here. The circles are selected, the nominals are in. You have picked that here from the CAD model. The report is in millimeter. I don't want to dump my graphic display window with a lot of analysis. Of course, I do want a dimension info. I'll be going with nominal and measure. Can I say create? Close. So now I have a position tolerance following datum ADB. One thing which I forget to do is I didn't change the tolerance here. Going to this drawing, then I will keep this 0.4 and 0.2. I'll be just doing the F line here to do that. So and then I'll be making this 0.4 to make this uh, as a composite callout. I'll be just Taking this one, and then once I say composite, automatically the composite callout position is in now. Okay, and two, then material condition is applicable here. And then secondary callout concerns only the orientation, so I just put plan A here. If I see the tolerance. Oh, good, 18 to 16.4. For the whole diameter, the tolerance follow the general tolerance. Yeah, I'll be using the general tolerance here, the table. Go in decimal, 0.25. So this is a good enough tolerance to control the position on this part. So say OK. And the damage lane for a subdata. You see the report window, you would see the position table, size table, followed by the position table, followed by the location table, followed by the secondary callout. You also would see the rhythm shift because of the material condition out there. That's it. Let's finish the session now and then I will see you in the upcoming videos. Thanks for your time and attention.